and welcome to the group. And uh, uh, we're going to record this uh, meeting for educational and promotional purposes. And what I'd like to do now, if I may, is to just uh, go around and ask you to briefly check in and say where you're at uh, for 30 seconds. And uh, I'm going to start across the top of my screen. So uh, Edwin, can you, can, you, uh, can you set it rolling, please? Uh, yeah. Um, how am I doing? Been doing a bunch of the empathy cafes, empathy circles, uh, the cohorts. So pretty busy with uh, uh, with the organization of it. And right now, I'm kind of making the breakout room. So I was a little distracted when you when you choked, called on me. Um, yeah, uh, nothing too much to report. I'm getting excited about the challenges project. Uh, Michelle has joined us on that. We're gonna be developing a process for sort of harvesting the challenges uh, and uh, creating a more systematic way of, of documenting them and then getting feedback on them and creating this uh, uh, challenges catalog. So uh, that's sort of the next, one of the next projects that I'm working on. So that's me, thanks. Sounds good, Edwin, thank you. And Celine, you're up next. Well, I'm very happy to be here, and uh, I have not done an empathy circle this week since I last saw you, but I did have an opportunity to have an empathy buddy call, for which I'm very grateful, and again, I'm just ready to keep on going with y'all. Thank you. Great stuff, Celine. So, Bill, you're up next. <clears throat> Um, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to be here and uh, to do this fourth cohort. And it's great to see everybody. It's, uh, it, you know, you leave it and then you deal with the um, prosaic world and then <laughs> you come back and, and you deal with the magical um, essence of everybody here. So I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Erin. Uh, Hi everybody, I'm Erin. Um, realize I'm a new face to a lot of you. Um, just uh, Edwin accepted me back into this cohort as a floater and uh, so this is the first time back in. And happy to see the, the friendly faces and also new faces. Um, and uh, I've had quite a few, facilitated quite a few empathy circles in the last couple of weeks that um, were really, um, wonderful and kind of high off of one from earlier just got off of so um, excited to to have today with you all so thank you Erin and welcome back as a floater thank you Lou uh, hi everybody it's great to see you all so grateful for you being here um, I had a couple of empathy buddy calls this week which were just wonderful really sweet very connecting <coughs> And, um, and while I didn't hold an empathy circle this week, I have spent, been spending a lot of time helping family members with different kinds of problems. And I get reinforced all the time what a huge difference good listening uh, uh, contributes to problem solving, uh, uh, both in terms of just understanding the problem and then, uh, and then uh, getting to solutions that are satisfying for everyone more and quickly because the problem is well understood and people feel understood their desires and their feelings feel understood and it's it's so interesting to see what a huge difference that makes you know yeah so i'm just reminded of that in the daily stuff i've been doing thank you lou now to you michelle yeah um Thanks so, thanks so much, Graham. So I, I noticed something really nice um, happening in the last, I wasn't here last week. Um, and in the last two weeks, I have noticed um, a number of people like spontaneously either because they like needed kind of emergency empathy <laughs> or, or also in one situation with emergency uh, mediation <laughs> that was needed. And it was quite nice and people, I think it's just like as a consequence of being in the group that, you know, of the training, it's like they, some of them people don't know that I'm doing part of this. 
but it's just happening naturally anyway. So it just seems to be like this byproduct of doing it is that like you start to, I'm finding I'm starting to gravitate into that role. And I was really grateful, especially in the, yeah, in the kind of more mediation role that it was like really grateful to have, yeah, to have this, the, like the skills from this group um, to be able to hold, to be able to hold some of that, you know, or, or make an attempt at it anyway. Um, I didn't hold an empathy circle this week, but I am on, on Saturday I'm going to be facilitating. So I, yeah, I'm kind of glad to be back this week and sorry I was missing last week. And I'm also really um, in, uh, excited about this kind of challenges project that's coming up. So hopefully there'll be a, more people joining the project team. <laughs> I think it'd be it's kind of a nice thing to put that kind of catalog together. Yeah, thanks. Thank you, Michelle. And Timothy, you're up next. Thank you, Graham. Hello, everybody. The first thing I want to say is I received some powerful empathy and support this morning. So that has put me in a state of just being like this. Just like if you look over at me, just picture me like this, just enjoying you and listening to you. Ah, like sighing and just, oh, okay. <laughs> like I'm seeing the best in you. Um, and the empathy I received this morning is from, uh, I'm working with a couple clients dealing with racism in their marriage and seeing that from the outside and inside. And it's really intense. Oh my gosh. And, um, and, and I, I'm holding the space as much as I could, but I really needed some help because it was just some, you know, deep, ancient, you know, the, the big social challenges of our time, you know. So I got this empathy and now I'm feeling so much more ease. I can be here. And I'm reminded of this basic thing. To give empathy, we need empathy. It's basic principle. It's almost like water or some kind of nourishment or a quantity of something. So that's happening for me right now. Um, so just, just picture me just enjoying today being with you. Uh, thanks, that's me. Thank you, Timothy. And Kian, it's over to you now, please. Um, yeah, I am um, really happy to be here. I just uh, got back from a a couple hour adventure into the wilderness behind um, where I live. Um, so that was really energizing and good to be out in nature. Um, I had a um, really, really meaningful buddy call with uh, Lou um, and just a lot. I've felt really, you know, inspired and, and, and I, you know, he introduced me to some, views, uh, ways of seeing things that I hadn't, you know, thought of before. Um, so I really enjoyed that. And, um, I have a, I didn't facilitate a circle this week, but, um, hoping to do one, um, this evening actually with my neighbors. Thank you. Ian. I hope you enjoy our meeting as much as you enjoyed the woods behind you. Hello, Kat. It's uh, your, your turn now. Hello. Um, the empathy buddy call I had that with yourself, Graham, and we had a good call focusing on relationships. So it was really insightful and inspiring. So I appreciate that, Graham. And then um, for the circles, so I was just doing my weekly Thursday circle. So I had a good response from emailing the facilitators. So the group's actually gone from 27 members to 61, which is a combination of me also promoting to the local community in Aberdeen, where I live as well, online. Um, so I'm trying to encourage participation, though. That's the next thing. I've got all these group members who are interested, but it's trying to get them to actually participate. So we've got some good participation from facilitators, but I kind of want a little bit over time rather than everyone in one week. So I'm just trying to get it to be a bit more even. So I've been increasing my communication to all the kind of members and these little places, with little messages, and then kind of looked at my commitments so that I've made like a schedule ahead. So I've got the whole month booked ahead. And so I've opened some spaces to then try and keep building a bit more to open more spaces. And then finally, I also spoke to um, the global head of training in the company I work for, who's my boss's boss, and proposed to him about putting an empathy circle into his work team meeting next, this month, actually. So we'll see if he does it or not, because there's quite a big bunch of blokes there are a bit resistant to empathy. So I quite enjoy seeing if we can get them to go for it or not. So, thanks very much. That's everything from me at the moment. Thank you very much, Kat. And Leslie? Yeah, hello, everybody. Um, so, so if anyone has not heard, um, uh, about 10 days ago, we had a tornado here in Vermont, and uh, it destroyed 
Kian's in my home. Um, it was the only home um, that that was uh, hit by the tornado, and and we are um, yeah, one foot in front of another, and and like just really tremendously being held um, and receiving lots of compassion from our community and friends. Um, and I would say the one of the gifts in it for me is having the opportunity, um, you know, to sort of invite um, or, or I guess like maybe sort of create and hold a space for folks around us to offer care and compassion. Um, there are a lot of people who are writing in our local forum, what can we do, what can we do? And right now there's sort of a limit to what people can do hands-on sort of cleaning up this mess. But um, I put out a call, you know, for kids to draw pictures, for people to send poetry to like just whatever sort of messages from the heart. And there's been a flood <laughs> um, of that. And so it just, it feels really good for sure um, for me and Kian to be receiving it, but also, um, you know, sort of sensing, I guess, the support of this culture of empathy um, that we're all up to creating, um, being able to do that with this um, situation um, feels really meaningful to me right now. Thank you, Leslie. I'm glad your community is supporting you, Leslie. Thank you. And it's over to you now, Le Evelyn. Yes, hello, I'm glad to be here too. Um, yeah, I got, uh, I did an empathy call with uh, Celine. It was very, very enriching. Uh, and we, I also joined Kat in her empathy circle, but as she already mentioned, <laughs> we didn't have very many participants, so I didn't get around to facilitate at all. Uh, the subject was self-empathy and it was very, uh, I got I gained quite a few insights from that uh, round, so so um, so it was worth it. I do hope that I'll get a chance to facilitate in the future, and I just have to sort of I'm still getting my bearings on how to reach out and what what to do. Not sure yet exactly, but thank you. Thank you, Evelyn, and Adelina. Can you now speak, please? Uh, so I did not have, uh, I did not organize any uh, embody circle this week, but I plan to have one next week and probably also one in May, which uh, I, maybe I'm, uh, I have high expectations, but uh, I suppose it's going to turn out in an empathy cafe in, the, in fact, so I'm a little bit nervous about it. Um, and also, I had uh, quite uh, a good call with uh, Janos this week. I met his lovely daughter in our body call, and it was uh, a really great experience for which I am really thankful. So Thank this, you, is, this has been my week. Thank you, Adelina. And Janos, can you uh, check in, please? Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, welcome, everyone. <coughs> I'm happy to be here with you. Uh, I also uh, don't uh, organize uh, my uh, uh, empathy circle. Uh, I'm not ready for that. I, I feel this and I want to learn more. And why I'm here uh, still because I am uh, uh, get uh, accepted in this course and I want to be uh, help others. So I'm happy to help others in the work but I don't feel myself ready to start alone. Uh, about uh, empathy uh, body meeting, I was so happy uh, uh, with uh, uh, our conversations and learn uh, about uh, others' uh, uh, problem in another country, uh, which is <clears throat> next to my uh, home country. And also she was so kind and, uh, and uh, uh, understand and accept uh, the situation because daughter, my daughter was with me uh, on the, this weekend and uh, we start uh, the challenge a uh, little bit uh, how can I help an, an alpha generations uh, uh, life journey in the early six years so that's a good, uh, good learning for me as well. 
Thank you. Thank you very much, Janos. And for me, uh, briefly, uh, I, I had a, an empathy buddy call with Kat Spence, and I actually enjoyed it. And uh, I enjoyed it so, uh, so much that I, I know as a listener, I pushed the boundaries out, but uh, I hope I didn't uh, uh, damage anything, but I thoroughly enjoyed it. And uh, I had another uh, empathy, uh, uh, empathy group meeting, and that went, uh, went very well. It's a regular one on a Tuesday. And uh, uh, I have had been in talks with my ex, and I share about this quite regularly. And Lou mentioned how important it is to be able to understand the problem and the perspective of others to be able to come to a solution. And uh, that is the kernel of our little issues, but it's, uh, it's progressing well. And I thank you and I'm glad to be here. So that's complete. And now Edwin, it's back over to you. Uh, to uh, Lou, who's gonna be doing our feedback. Okay, so this is the part where we take a few minutes and, and address questions that were um, uh, given in the feedback form or even ones that arise here during the check-in. So here's what I have, and I apologize for the printer noise behind me that hopefully will stop soon. <laughs> um, so there was a question about uh, if you are holding an empathy cafe or if you're holding an empathy circle and, it, and you're worried that it's gonna turn into an empathy cafe because there are a lot of people, are, is there a way to help prepare facilitators for that when you know they haven't really gone through this training, and I would say um, the way the way I have dealt with that is uh, selecting people to be facilitators who are kind of naturally empathic, <laughs> who, who you experience as empathic people. You know, they have a kind of an understanding, and then be sure to do at least one empathy circle with those people so they can experience the process and see what it's like and see how it works. And they don't have to understand a lot about it intellectually, but at least they're, they're, they're experiencing it. And then, you know, give them the sheet of paper that explains the structure and then give them that as a way to, um, as a way to hold the process. So that, that's my suggestions for how to do that. Um, next question was about what if in the circle, um, the speaker chooses the person who um, spoke previously to be their listener because they want to respond to something that the person said. Uh, and I would say as a facilitator, well, first off, I would say that the, um, yeah, I, I, uh, as a facilitator, I wouldn't, it isn't that I would never allow a speaker to select the previous speaker as a listener. I might do that sometimes. Um, but generally, I try to hold the, the process of selecting someone who hasn't listened in this round to make sure that mutuality is happening. And that's actually just what I would tell the speaker. Uh, would you be willing to select someone else so that they get a chance to speak and everyone gets a chance to speak and point out that even if you want to respond to something that the, this person said, they don't have to be your listener. Someone else could be reflecting and you could still respond to whatever it is that they said. So the next question was about what if a silent listener interrupts the speaker? And I would say as a facilitator, you just remind them that their role is right now is to be a silent listener and that when it's their turn to speak, they could say whatever it is that they're wanting to say, but that that's not their job right now. And that holding a, and that holding a space, one of the things about the empathy circle is we're holding a space for the speaker to speak without being interrupted. And that that's kind of, um, that that's one of the ways that the person feels safe and free to say whatever they want is that nobody's gonna interrupt them. Uh, okay. Um, next question was about um, more information about what's gonna happen after this course. And that will, that'll come at the end of the course. I'm not gonna take time to talk about that now, but we, uh, that's, we'll talk about that at the end of class today. Um, what happens if somebody's reflecting very robotically? Um, 
So what I would say about that is try to set aside your judgments that they're uh, reflecting robotically. And your job as a facilitator is to, if you think that important pieces of what the speaker is saying are being missed, then you want to help with reflecting that. And you could start by uh, asking the speaker, so I'm wondering if you feel fully heard, or I heard this piece and I'm wondering if that was missed. Um, that would be after giving the speaker some time to uh, give feedback to the listener about, you know, that they missed some piece. You want to let that happen first. But if that's not happening, and if or if the feedback is being given and the speaker, the reflector continues to miss important information, then you want to help as the as the uh, facilitator. Um, and I would say that that process, you also want to really pay attention to how is the speaker responding to what's happening? Because you may think big things are being missed, but if the speaker isn't, doesn't seem to be bothered by it, then that's okay. Um, unless you think the speaker is the kind of person who ignores, who doesn't want to say, well, you missed this part. You know, sometimes out of politeness, people will go completely unheard out of politeness and not be willing to say, well, no, that wasn't it. And if you think that's happening as a facilitator, then you want to you want to say something about that. Um, okay, and the last one was about taking notes. Uh, what happens if somebody is taking notes? We've talked about that some, I think, and note taking is okay. Sometimes it supports people in feeling relaxed and helping to remember things that are being said. But in this case, the person was saying, what if the note taking becomes so intense that the speaker is waiting because the person's taking notes and then it's really stretching out the process. And I would say if it's becoming problematic like that, then you wanna to talk to the person about it and say, so I noticed that your note taking is really slowing things down. And uh, I'm wondering if you'd be willing to just try and see what you can remember. Or the other thing would be to ask the speaker to speak in smaller chunks so that the note taker wouldn't uh, has less trouble holding on to it. Okay. Anyone, anyone else have anything they want to add? Any of the other instructors have anything they want to add to what I've said? Okay, that's the feedback for this week. Uh, whom I don't know who I'm handing it to. Uh, Celine, I think it was. There you go, Celine. Muted, Celine. Celine, you're muted. Thank you, Graham. So today in the breakout, what we're going to do is um, you will be facilitating. Um, and you get to choose the challenge level that you want. It could be nothing. It could be a low, medium, high, um, whatever you choose, whatever you feel ready to experience. You get to set the topic and keep the times. And we're gonna do three minute rounds. And we will have um, lots of time for this, these breakout, these uh, empathy circles. And then we'll have 30 minutes to debrief in the main room afterwards. So, uh, Edwin will put us in rooms and we will enjoy so, company circles. So we, we have one hour from now before we call back into the main. Oh, we room. have an hour and a half. Oh, okay. Right. Okay. That's good. And I'll send a 10 minute uh, heads up uh, before, uh, you know, we come back to the full group. So we're going to have three groups. Uh, one will be facilitated by Michelle with support from Timothy. And Aaron will be in that one and you'll be a, just a participant this time around as a, as a floater. Uh, then there's uh, room number two is with uh, Graham supported by uh, Lou. And then there'll be the other one which will stay here, which will be uh, uh, Celine will facilitate and uh, supported by Bill. So about 
four or five in each group and I'll stay here with you, Bill and Salim. So I think we're ready to go. And here we should see the button, the push to join the room. You're in charge, Celine. Okay, great. Hello, everybody. Here we are in our, in our empathy circle. And so I'm gonna ask who is ready to be the first facilitator of, the, of this group. So we have, Ad, I guess, Adelina and Kian. One of you will say you're ready. And also, if you want a cha any challenge, you get to ask for that. What do you say? You're muted, so I need some help to hear you. Thanks, Kian. Um, yeah. Um, I guess I'll. I guess I'll go first then. Sure. Great. Thank you. <laughs> so, um, do you have a sense of wanting challenge or not? Yeah. Um, yeah. I'd like. Hmm. I guess. How about medium for today? Mm -hmm. Okay. Great. And. You get to set the topic too. Oh, oh boy. Um, <laughs> hmm. <clears throat> hmm. I haven't thought about this. Sorry. Um, how about. Well, I guess I'll go to one of my um, old favorites, which is humanity. And what does that mean to you? And what responsibilities come with that word? Humanity, what it means to us and what responsibilities come with. <clears throat> Great. I'm glad to have something lightweight, Kian. <laughs> something meaty. <I> love. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Um, and uh, who would like to be the first speaker? I guess I can be the. Oh, go ahead, Alina. Go ahead. Um, and, um, do you mind if I listen first or? Yeah, it's fine if you listen first. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. All right. Go ahead. Okay. So I said that I'm going to be the first one, but, uh, it's not like I have something on my mind. So I'm just going to go with the flow. Mm. Yeah. So you just want to. You weren't thinking about anything, but you're just sort of settling in. Yeah. It's not an easy topic. Um, what it means for me to, to be human. I think that's one of the, the first things that uh, goes to my, to my mind is um, taking care of others 
and caring about the others around me and uh, not only the people surrounding me, but also the whole environment. Yeah, so something that, that comes to mind is, is, is care and, and caring for others, not just, you know, other beings, but the whole environment. Uh, and the responsibility that that comes with um, humanity, I feel like it's it's very very big. And uh, one of the things that at least what what I'm trying to do is to uh, live every moment and try to do my best every every day that I can because that that's the first thing that comes comes to mind right now what I'm, how I'm trying to um, to assume responsibility. This, this is one of the ways that I think I'm trying to do my best of just to be human. It, it, it's, it's really, I don't know, it, not, not confusing, but it's, um, it's a little bit blurry, at least right now to I, I think that I need to, a little bit more time to sit with it, with the whole idea. Yeah, so it's you know you, you want more time to sit with the the whole the whole idea, and you you said you said it's you know it's really the responsibility that you know comes with humanity is, is really is really is really big, um, but you're saying that you know you do your best to just take it day by day, and just do what you can. Yeah. Yeah, I think I, I feel hurt and yeah, for now it's it's fine. Thank you. Um can I talk to Edwin? Yep, listening. Yeah. Um Yeah, humanity I feel like is something that Ideally, is you know, is is brings out the best of, of who of who we are as you know humans, empathy, compassion, you know, being able to fully see and appreciate other people. Um, yeah. So for you, people. humanity means to see sort of the best in people, their empathy and uh, sort of goodness maybe in them. Yeah, um, and, and and offering that. I, I, I feel like is is a uh, one of the you know more meaningful acts of humanity yeah so uh, a meaningful act of humanity is to see the the goodness or the the empathy in people so the good qualities of people mm -hmm. um and I'm and I'm not really sure if if it's you know what what form it takes is it is it you know our us as people like just our population is is it our our how we express how we what makes us human or is it something else is it you know i don't know mm -hmm. i feel like it has a lot of forms yeah, so it sounds like you're trying to make sense of this. It's like you don't quite know kind of what does it really mean, and you're seeing that it has maybe a lot of different forms to it, and it's sort of an exploration I'm hearing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, and I'm ju I've just been trying to know, you know, pay attention to when all the times, you know, that that we do, you know, show and share humanity. Because there's certainly a lot of times we don't, and I've 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 been wanting to you know give attention to both equally. Uh, so there's uh, it sounds like the humanity is sort of this positive in people, and there's sort of the the negative, and people have sort of both of those, and you're trying to kind of explore what the sort of the positive aspects of humanity is. I'm not sure if I quite got that. But... Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. um, yeah. Because I feel like it's easy to to notice the not positive aspects, yeah.
yeah so you want to you want to notice the positive aspects of humanity because it's hard to, harder to notice that maybe it's easier to notice the the negative uh, parts yeah. of humanity yeah but they're you know they're still very much there and you know i feel like i've been experiencing that with from my community and mm. yeah so i'm really just appreciating that right now so you've been seeing a lot of the positive aspects of humanity and i guess reaching out to you because of, of your situation and you're just feeling feeling that that how people have reached out to the yeah thank you i feel hurt okay yeah uh speak to celine then sure uh what came up for me is uh in the term humanity was the term common humanity uh which uh, i see really sort of relates to you know the empathy work that we're doing so what comes up for you when you think of this um subject of humanity is common humanity mm -hmm. and that's shows up of course there's a maybe foundational in this work of empathy circles yeah i i see sort of the empathy you know building a culture of empathy is seeing the common humanity of mm -hmm. which means you know seeing that hey people are kind of like the same underneath if you really sort of start digging into looking at who they are and get past the you know the superficial you see you know people have the same experiences they have the same experiences as i have so you see, you've seen in this world of the empathy circles as common humanity, this getting to a place where we see what we do hold in common, the values and experiences that that people share. Yeah, and uh, it's sort of when we do the empathy circle, we have people from all over the world and people are talking about a lot of the same issues, especially when they're dealing with uh, problems or challenges in their life, like, you know, how do they relate to their family? Uh, you know, uh, how do they relate to others? How do they deal with conflict? How do they deal with their feelings and, and emotions that are, you know, coming up? So uh, that's sort of like seeing, you know, whoever it is, they, they have those underlying things that I can sort of connect, to, those feelings that I can connect with. So through these empathy circles, I'm hearing that, you know, you've seen that inner, all over the world, people are dealing with the same kinds of challenges and challenges in getting along with their families and getting along with, maybe with at work and the same uh, feelings about these things, the same things we all care about, basically about the same things. We share a lot as a, as humans yeah and for me when we're for example doing conflict mediation that sort of guides the mediation is that there is this common humanity of people and if we can just get past whatever the conflict is that i can sort of be able to connect with those that deeper humanity that they have mm -hmm. and so i see that's my time so yeah so especially in doing conflict mediation, you see how once it, um, it's clear the common humanity, the common values, that from then the conflict can be approached in a, in a different way. Yeah, there's more about take it next, add it next time. So I feel heard, thanks. Thank you. <clears throat> Um, okay, uh, Bill, would you listen to me? Sure, happily. So I, when I first heard this, we're going to talk about humanity, I, I had kind of this burst of openness and enthusiasm, and also this impulse to, to weep. So when you um, first heard about the topic, you had a, a burst of uh, openness and joy, but also you had an urge to weep. It touches me deeply. Uh, the first, I don't know why yet, I haven't figured it out. Um, but I find it a very oh. interesting mystery for now. I'll, I'll stop there. So you don't know quite why the subject of humanity touches you deeply and it's somewhat of a mystery. 
I love hearing and I've collected stories of human beings doing beautiful things for each other. And I, I worked in the Middle East a little bit and I shared those stories because I thought that what people most needed was hope. So you've um, collected stories where human beings are doing kind and you know uh, things for other people and you've worked in the Middle East and you've tried to share those stories because you feel that it offers the participants hope. Yes, thank you. And I think we are currently all over the world um, needing and uh, nourished by these kinds of stories that tell of humans being kind and generous to everybody, uh, humans and the rest of the world. So you think that it's very important for people to, um, you know, share these stories, especially in the, the climate we have of division and things like that, to have stories of hope and kindness, uh, to give people another perspective on how things can be. Yes. So um, I'm really appreciating this, this exploration. I, because I think we can be so generous and kind and we can also be so selfish and unkind. So you wanna share these stories um, because uh, humanity is a mixed bag. <laughs> That's it. Thank you. I don't know if my, my time is up or not, but I feel fully heard for now. Thank you very much. Okay, I'll talk to Adelina. Yes. Okay. Um, so I find in, in, in my researches, so, sociologic and experience and uh, uh, you know, and looking into the, into science and things like that, um, that we face uh, uh, an essential paradox. I'll stop there. So you have found in your research that we are saying an essential paradox. Right. And the paradox is, is that we are fully individual beings. And at the same time, we are integrated completely and dependent on the universe. I'll stop there. So if I got this right, we are fully independent of beings, but mm -hmm. in the same time, we are fully integrated in the universe. Right. And the, um, uh, the analogy I'll draw is with our uh, cells, like white blood cells. Now, white blood cells go around, they're kind of amoeba-like, and they go and they devour things and then they die. Um, so they live, nobody says, hey, white cells, you wanna sign up for this job? <laughs> they just do it. Um, and yet they also play an integral part in, our, in keeping us alive. I'll stop there. So you are making an analogy with white cells mm -hmm. who are, uh, defending our our system our body and uh, nobody is asking them to do this right right yeah the, and the white cells I, I assume are, are not you know don't have misgivings uh, feelings of uh, oh I'm defending this um, they're just doing what they're doing naturally um, so um, so in doing what one does naturally one also participates in the great universal experience. Could you explain that a little bit better, Bill? It's not really quite making sense to me. I wonder if you could sort of explain it in a little bit easier terms. Oh, um, Edwin, excuse me. Yeah. Um, you're, right now you're being a silent listener. So um, I would ask you to please uh, maintain that role. But um, when it's your turn, you can, you know, 
Okay. Did, you know, yeah. Well, it's just, it wasn't making sense what he was saying. So I just kind of like wondered if you could make it a little clearer. Yeah, it's called the paradox, Edwin. <laughs> oh, the paradox. <laughs> <laughs> That's where the paradox comes in. <laughs> so I know, and I shouldn't have uh, responded, but. Um, so, so that's it. Uh, when we, so in what Edwin talked about, and I'll finish up my time, um, is that um, we are trained to look at things in a very um, mechanistic way, um, you know, white or black, uh, categorized, and yet um, that's there's nothing wrong with that. But nevertheless, it's also not the complete truth. And that's the paradox. So you are saying that the paradox consists in the fact that we are trained to see things in black on, or white, but mm -hmm. uh, in fact, this is not uh, this is not the complete way to look at things. So we could also see in gray or. Thank you. I feel fully heard, Adelina. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, Kian, would you be my, my listener? Yeah. I, I was really touched by what, uh, what Celine was talking about when, when she mentioned hope. And um, I feel like this is one of the things that defines us as humans, having hope and trusting, trusting the process, if you want, trusting that things at some point, to, or trusting in ourselves that we can make things better for us and for the others. So you were touched by what Celine was talking about, um, about hope, and how that you know is uh, you know something that defines humanity, and, and and trust, trust that you know we can. You know, trust, trusting, yeah. Uh, Edwin, sorry, Adelina. Um, uh, could I ask you to please um, um, hold on the, the working out right now, or if you want to, to please um, go where we can't see you right now. It's a little bit distracting. Thank you. Sorry, Adelina. I, I think I, I got lost a little bit in, in thoughts right now. And... Yeah, you can take a moment, you'll have a little more time. Yeah, so especially in this context that we are living at the moment, I, I, I think that hope is one of the things that is driving us. And at least for me, it's one of the things that made me keep going and uh, get over this, this whole situation that we are living in. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just hoping that at some point we are gonna get out of this. So you're, you're thinking that hope is really, you know, it's really important and it's something that you've been, you know, that's been driving you, you know, you've been hopeful and you're really thinking that, you know, if, sorry. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, so I think that this is, for me, it's, uh, it's one of the, the most important um, aspects of being human still having hope it's well yeah it, it's one of the things that uh, usually usually drives me i'm probably because i'm trying to keep an optimistic view on things and yeah so it's your hope is very important to you and it's something that you know really really drives you and supporting you know keeping a positive view thank you i feel heard yeah. Um, Celine, could I speak to you? Yes, certainly. Okay. Um, I'm getting a little bored here. Could you speak to me? I just need a little bit more activity. 
Um, yeah, uh, you will. You will have a turn. Um, but for now, I'm going to ask you to, to you know, maintain your role as silent listener. Is that okay with you? Okay, but I hope you guys hurry up a little bit. I want it to come to me soon because I'm getting kind of tired. Yeah, each person will get about, about three three minutes, so you'll get your three minutes. Um, yeah, so I was also appreciating what you were saying about hope, and also Adelina, you know, um, was saying, um, and I, f I feel like it's, it's, um, as she said, you know, very, very necessary and really um, brings, I guess, I guess our, our, our humanity out, yeah. So you're appreciating the topic of hope um, with regard to the topic of humanity and you see it as something that's very necessary for us to be able to express our humanity, or feel it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I feel like it's something that we all, you know, had, you know, it our experience at, at some point or another, hoping for, hoping for something that, you know, whether you have or do not have a lot, you know, it's also, it's something that everybody, I think, feels. So you see this as something common to all people, to everyone needs hope. And it's, it's, very, it's an important factor for all people on the planet. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah, I, I, think, I think I feel heard right now. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Okay, I'm going to ask, I hear your impatience, Edwin, so um, I'd hate for you to be bored. So uh, would you be my listener? Yep, I'm listening. Yay, get to talk. Well, I think that this dealing with this virus has possibly created a, a different sense of our humanity and that we won't really understand or recognize for a while. Uh, it hasn't yet been, as far as I know, articulated. And, yeah. Yeah, so uh, this pandemic, this virus has sort of affected our humanity and you think that the effects haven't really been uh, articulated yet. Because I think it's humbling that we are uh, on bended knee at the mercy of something that we know exists, but we need some a very fancy microscope to to see it. Yeah, so the pandemic has humbled humanity in a sense that there's this little thing that you can't even see without a microscope and it's just humbled everyone. And maybe it's going to shave off some of our arrogance as a species. And so you're it just, shaves off oh, people. Yeah, as it kills people, uh, it uh, might uh, reduce the sort of the arrogance that hu humanity humans have. It's just sort of a speculation. Maybe you're just kind of wondering that if it's I am. true. Yes. Maybe and a bit of hope there that it does do that. Yes, and maybe we will, as a result, be a more uh, generous and appreciative as a species. That's so this humanity hope. might make us more generous and as a species is gonna make us more caring or 
Edwin, yeah, can I just ask, um, it seems like she hasn't finished um, her thoughts a few times, so could I ask you to just um, leave a second for her to finish before you reflect? Sure. Um, so, I, I do think that the, uh, I imagine the effect of, the, of dealing with this pandemic will, no, I don't really. I was gonna say we'll shift what we are like as a species, but the truth is we've been through this before. <laughs> I don't think it necessarily does make us more kind and generous. I don't know. Yeah, so uh, I see that's the time, but yeah, you you had some hope. Well, maybe we'll become more kind and generous because of this pandemic. Uh, and then you're kind of looking back at history and saying, well, it really hasn't over time. So we've sort of dealt with this before. So maybe a bit skeptical, feeling some hope on one hand and some skepticism that's going to have any effect on the other. Yes. Thank you, Edwin. I feel fully heard. Okay. Well, I'll speak back to you then. Um, so... Um, Excuse me, Edwin, before you start... Um, would you, since, so everybody, you know, gets a turn and we can keep, you know, going in, in a circle, would do you, would you mind um, speaking to somebody else or do you really feel um, strongly about speaking yeah, to I could speak to someone else, I guess. That wouldn't hurt. I'll speak to you then. Uh, so, um, yeah, I was kind of curious about Celine. She, uh, just that when she, the topic came up, she seemed to be very moved by it. You know, she just felt, and I was kind of curious if, if that was because there's the humanity sort of means the sense of connection. So I was just wondering if it's that sense of connection is what uh, Celine is sort of moved by. Yeah. So you're noticing she was, you know, feeling moved by something and. And um, you're wondering if it, it was the sense of connection that... Uh, yeah, it's like the, the word humanity sort of means that there is this sense, it seems like it has sort of this sense of connection to it, right? That it's, uh, and that you feel, oh, we're really connected to everyone. And so I just kind of curious, I guess I had some curiosity what it was that really moved her. So just, just sitting with that curiosity. Yeah, so you were, you, were, you know, wondering, curious about what, what it was about that, um, that humanity sense of connection that was moving to Celine. Yeah, and uh, the other thing was, uh, I just wonder what the empathy circle has to do with humanity. I'm curious, like, you know, what does this topic have to do with the empathy circle? Is, is I kind of think the empathy circle kind of helps us connect to our humanity, our common humanity, was when people kind of listen to each other they start connecting to their humanity. Yeah, so you're, you're wondering how the empathy circle and this topic of humanity connect, and you're thinking that the empathy circle, you know, supports and brings out um, the humanity in people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel heard. Thanks, Kian. Thank you. So, Kian, you had your turn to facilitate. And now we, it, we can take a little time to um, debrief and ask you how you're feeling about your facilitation. Hmm. Um, <laughs> um, I feel like I, I got too, so much into the, to, into, you know, our, our circle that I, it was sort of startling to, to, you know, be dealing with, um, the, the you know the challenges um but it was it was it was um you know that's good that that would be what happens you know you're this is you're, so you're not gonna go out and have circles about challenges it's about what you were talking about so i feel that you know this was a really you know <laughs> useful um experience yeah mm -hmm. yeah you got to really practice dealing with that the uh the challenge, the distraction of the challenge. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So anyone else have some, some feedback for Kian? Um, sure. Uh, 
I, I liked your, your timing, Kian, because I kind of got into it too. And when uh, uh, Edwin, I was actually in my mind, I was expecting Celine to give the uh, challenges. And then when Edwin did that, I was taken a little bit uh, by surprise. And you just, uh, and I was about to almost respond and you kind of like just got that in, in time and kept the flow going. So that's one of the things I, you try to keep a kind of a flow. And um, so I liked your timing. Thank you. Edwin, do you yeah. have any? I, I was posting in there to see, Celine, remember to give Keith some challenges. We usually want the, you know, the facility uh, trainee to, to do it. Uh, but I think, mm. okay, if you're not going to do it, I'm going to jump in. So uh, yeah, it. Uh, I felt like you're kind of putting me in my place. Uh, the only yeah. thing is you could sometimes uh, just offer a little empathy. So I really hear you want to speak and, you know, we really want to hear what you have to say. Uh, but if you just want to, you know, kind of start with a little bit of empathy like that, that I felt a little, felt a little, you know, I don't know, what is it? Uh, not as smooth. It, my, I could have gotten a little triggered a little bit, I think, if it was a new person. But it was always good just to send, give a little bit of empathy. So, and then the correction yeah but otherwise yeah it's a great topic got, got really into it yeah that's me so um uh, i forgot <laughs> <laughs> and i got lost in the timing i got worried about the timing so I'll, mm. that's how i got lost how i mm. forgot and then i saw you edwin doing the challenges and i i thought oh well great yeah edwin's taking care of it so that was my, there's my learning. Mm -hmm. And um, my, my, I liked your facilitation, Kian, and uh, it's, everything seemed clear to me, like, except for I got worried about the timing. I don't know why, but I did. And I, I would have liked a um, softer expression on your face when you, when you did the interventions. Uh, you know, it doesn't have to be a smile kind of thing, but there was a sense of maybe a little bit of severity in your, and I, that's something I struggle with in my life. So I know about, you know, the face can look really severe, more severe than what's going on inside. So, um, but you caught it. I, I saw each time you caught the misbehavior. <laughs> so I'm complete. Thank you. Adelina, do you have some feedback for Kian? Yeah, I, I felt like he was very firm whenever he was trying to, to intervene. But the timing, as Bill said, I felt like it was really good. I did not stop the flow of the, of the circle. And uh, I actually, uh, when it was uh, our exchange bills and mine and Edwin interrupted, I, I felt like, Ooh, <laughs> this is so great that he intervened here. So. Yeah, uh, I think that if we were in a group that it's not uh, about training, I would have felt uh, hurt and seen that uh, you intervened in that in that particular moment. So yeah, thank you. <laughs> okay, great, thank you. So anything else, Ken, before we we go to Adelina facilitating? Um. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I feel like, you know, I've, in my, um, my previous training, I got the feedback about, you know, just like it calm down a little bit, just, you know, it's not so, um, I don't have to be as intense and I'm just wondering what I can do to maybe just slow down a bit. Yeah. I'll just say that, yeah, I, I, I didn't get the severity um, and that's just, uh, no one's right about that. Uh, it's just that uh, different people will take it different ways. And as you get more comfortable, you learn to get the feedback. Like for instance, I might not, and by the way, that's called the, in the lexicon here, it's called the resting bitch face. <laughs> and, and, and we all have it. Um, and, but I, so I didn't react like that, but Celine would. And so the art of facilitating would be to kind of notice that. 
if if Celine seemed more reticent or something like that, and I just went on, you know, that would just something to kind of note. That's all. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't worry about it too much. Yeah, me too. The, the, the core is mm -hmm. being empathic, having an mm -hmm. empathic attitude. Like, oh, it's like I I felt a little bit of you know rigidity there, and I could have like escalated it. Uh, but if I hear a little bit of understanding, oh, I hear you're a little impatient here, uh, but we'll have, uh, you know, you're, you're really wanting to talk, uh, but we want to give everyone a chance to be equal. So it's a little bit of empathy, you know, just reflecting back what, so the energy that the person is sort of disrupting is, and then the correction. So it's that, that little empathy gives a little bit of a so softness. Uh, is, so that's the, uh, oh, like blues. Yeah, yeah, I want to do that. It's just, I guess I want to find, you know, I want to be able to do that and, 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 you know, let the person who is speaking, you know, have their turn and not let get it too off track. But mm -hmm. Yeah, but even just a split second there, you know, a second of a little bit of empathy just takes like a second and then, or even having an empathic sort of bit of mindset, oh, he's just, Oh, you're really feeling anxious here. You're feeling a bit like you really want some involvement, uh, but we want everyone to be involved, you know. And if we just wait your turn, you'll, we want to full, we'll fully hear you. So it's just that little bit of an empathic, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Edwin. That's great feedback. I appreciate that. Okay, Adelina, it's your turn. So you get your, I think, half hour. Perfect. So I, I would also like to choose a medium challenge. Medium challenge. Okay. Yes. Uh, and uh, the topic that I thought about would be uh, letting people go out of our lives. So be it uh, usually around breaking relationships. That, that would be the, the topic that I chose. And I was wondering who would like to be the first speaker? OK, I'll go. Okay. Uh, would it be OK if, I would, if I'm going to be your uh, listener? Or oh, would you like to choose somebody else? No, that's fine. Um, well, um, letting people go, um, don't fight it, <laughs> uh, after long and painful experience, uh, people are going to do what they're going to do and be who they're going to be. And, um, after a long unsuccessful experience trying to uh, influence them, <laughs> I, I wisely decided to try to give up on that. So I'll stop there. What I'm hearing is that uh, your experience with letting people go is that you tried to influence them, uh, but in the end you realize that uh, they are going to do what they are going to do. And we shouldn't, we should just stop fighting them. Right. And, um, and then uh, ironically, paradoxically, again, sometimes when we don't, you try to influence them, uh, that uh, also helps to lower their defense mechanisms. And sometimes people will think about things and then re-engage. Uh, and I don't know what we're talking about, friends or lovers here, or things like that. But that, um, so I just find that to be, to let people, you know, be who they're going to be. I'll stop there. So from your experience, when we are not trying to uh, convince them or trying mm -hmm. to keep them around us, they, you realize that at some point they just engage once again and they somehow eventually yes. come back. Sometimes, sometimes, not all the time. You gotta really let them go, because <laughs> uh, if you you hold out hope, 
Um, that's a fool's errand, I believe. I'll stop there. But the thing oh, is that it makes a difference whether it's a lover's relationship or a friendship relationship. I mean, you have to take that into account. It's hard to let go of someone if they're really, you know, really important in your life. I, I'm sorry, Celine. Uh, we, um, I, I hear that you, I, I feel like you had this urge of, uh, of talking. You wanted to uh, come with some uh, more meaning to what Bill was saying, but we, uh, we were having this exchange in which uh, I was trying to reflect what Bill was saying. So I was wondering if you could wait for your turn to, to speak as you were uh, the silent listener at the moment. And would it be okay for you to, to wait until your turn will come up for, to speak? Um, yeah, I was just, I appreciate clarity. So that's why I wanted to make sure Bill was a little more clear. So, so you, yeah, you needed a little bit of more clarity from, from Bill's part. Would it, would it be okay if we waited till your turn comes? Yeah, sure, sure, thank you. I'll, I'll do that, I'll wait, thank I'll you. be clear. Um, so Bill, going back to you, I, I got a little bit lost in, uh, I, I, could you please repeat what you were saying before or maybe come with a little bit more clarification as per Celine's asked? Okay, well, I guess I'm feeling a little picked on in this circle because Edwin is, a, I'm talking about paradox and mysteries and people are asking me to be clear and I can't be any more clear than saying it's a paradox or a mystery. Um, and uh, so I will try to address, um, well, I'll stop there first. I hear you saying that you're feeling a little bit picked upon as mm -hmm. you're saying clearly that there's mystery around it, there's a paradox and mm. you feel like you have not been heard around it. Right, that's like define mystery and paradox in less than three minutes. I think that's a pretty tall order. Um, but I will say about friends and lovers, uh, you're right, it's, uh, I, uh, Celine is right, lovers are more intense, um, but, uh, but I think the rules still apply. <laughs> and then I'm done, thank you. So you're saying that uh the rules still apply whether it's uh, friends or lovers it's still yeah. kind of the same yeah. okay. thank you um celine would you be my my listener sure okay so the reason i uh, picked this this topic is that um at this particular moment, I'm dealing with uh, having to let some people of my life go. Like um, I, I'm actually having uh, one of my team members at work that she's going to to leave my team, and it really took me by surprise. So the reason you picked this topic is because you're dealing with it in your life having to let some people go and even you're dealing with a member of your team leaving the team which is having quite an impact on you yeah while also having another uh team member that probably i will have to let go myself because of his performance which is uh really uh, it comes with a lot of pressure at the moment for me. It's the, the first time that I'm going to have to do this. And it's a responsibility that I knew I, I'm going to have at some point. So it's not very comfortable to live with it, especially in this con social context that we are going through right now. And so in addition to one of your team members leaving, you are seeing that there's somebody that you are going to have to let go because of his performance. And it puts pressure on you. And you actually have known for a while that you would be doing this, but especially in the social context that we're in, it's, it's very difficult. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I guess that that's all at the moment. Thank you for listening. So you're welcome. Thank you. Um, so, uh, Kian, would you listen to me? Thank you. Um, well, big topics in this circle. Um, <laughs> nothing superficial. For me, letting go of people in my life has been mostly greatly traumatic. I'll pause there. So for you, the letting go of people has been has been very traumatic. I I suffer hugely and for a long time it takes me a long time to get over it. Hmm. So you you know, you feel you know, you, you suffer and it it's, it's a long process, getting over losing people. Yes. And I rejoice when there is reconciliation. I, I, love, I love that humans are capable of reconciliation. So you are really appreciating and rejoice um, when there is reconciliation. Um, I think it's kind of miraculous, actually, that, that that happens, that we can be so uh, hurt and angry, and then at a different point, we're still willing to open our hearts again with the same person and give it another chance. So you're seeing as it as miraculous that no you know no matter you know but how challenging something may be with a person that they can you can still open up to them and give it another chance. Yes. So I I I cherish those relationships where this has happened, and uh, I think there's a combination of um, sometimes more depth and also a little a little discomfort because there's a little less trust yes yeah, so, um I'm not sure I followed what you were you were saying, could you, could you repeat one more time, sorry? Oh, it doesn't matter. It, my time is almost up, so that's okay. Thank you. Helen, it feels like you, you got a little bit caught off. Maybe you, you could try to um, just say what, what you wanted to say, even though your time was almost up. Well, just, just to finish your, your idea. Well, it, it, I find it interesting that in relationships where you, where there has been a separation and then there's some kind of reconciliation, there's something special and there's maybe not complete trust, but there is a desire to reconnect. Uh, thank you. So, um, you know, you you find it interesting that when there's a relationship that has been um, challenged or hurt, and then um, you know reconciliation, you you you're noticing that there is you know a, a, a wanting to try again, but also not complete trust. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you. I feel hurt. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, Edwin, can I speak to you? Yeah, listening. Hmm. Hmm. I guess for me, 
um, most of my experiences of of um, letting go of you know people has been has been um, through death um, and that's you know that's not usually one that can be um, repaired um, not that it's necessarily you know out of her it's just natural but um, it's still there's still loss mm -hmm. yeah so your experience with um, with letting people go has come through through uh, death and there's not much you can really do with with that sort of form of loss mm -hmm. um, and often what I do you know is I feel I, I feel that you know as you know, someone who, who's died is, you know, they're, they're, it's not the same, obviously. They're no longer really here. I still feel connected to them. Yeah, so even when people uh, die, that there's still a sense of a connection that you, you have with, with them. They're not there, but you still feel that sense of connection. Yeah, and I just, I, I, you know, I don't really, it's a very, it's a very, um, A confusing thing um mm -hmm. but um I've, I've, I've found that really helpful to maintain some sort of connection or even appreciation for who someone was even if they're you know no longer alive yeah so having that sense of a connection to them on one hand is kind of uh confusing like how can you have that connection and on the other hand you just you like that Sounds like you like that sense of connection or value that. Yeah. Yeah, and um, I guess another, another, um, <clears throat> excuse me, another experience of loss to some degree or letting go of somebody was um, a couple years ago when my best friend moved for my whole life, moved away. Um, and, you know, that was definitely letting go. And I've sort of found it, have found it hard to still, you know, connect as much as I want to from afar. So another experience with uh, letting go was uh, with like your best friend who moved. So there's like, a, you kind of have to let go and, and it's hard to sort of maintain that feeling of connection when they're gone. But even if you use Zoom and phone and stuff, you still don't feel connected? Because I find that Zoom is really helping me stay connected with people in a different way, but it's very helpful. Yeah, I think that's good advice. Mm -hmm. Celine, uh, yeah. could, I, I think that uh, I feel like you uh, once again wanted to uh, to would talk when even though it wasn't your turn you were still a silent listener and I was wondering if you could uh, uh, just uh, I, I, I don't know maybe uh, wait till your turn is going to to come would it be okay I for you be helpful for Kian because I felt mm -hmm. you know how sad that he was so I just wanted to I, I was wondering how how would it be for you to reflect upon this when you're turn comes and you can address this uh, this concern of yours to Kian when it's your turn to speak. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. I'll, I'll do that. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Well, then I guess it's my turn again. Is that right, Adelina? Is, yes. I can't remember yes. whose turn it's supposed to A be. Yeah. Yeah. It's your turn to, okay. to speak now. Yes. Yeah, so I'll speak to uh, Bill. Listening? Oh, I think Kian has something. Um. Yeah, I was. I wasn't sure. I I was speaking, but I wasn't sure if is, does that mean my time was up or is it? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Your your time was up. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. Did you feel heard, Kian? The... Yes. Yes. I felt. Okay. So uh, yeah, I guess I'll go then. Um, letting go. 
So, yeah, I was just thinking about the letting go. You know, I tend to, I have kind of conflicting sort of feelings about that. On one hand, I kind of want to work things through with people, uh, you know, to kind of have a sense of kind of connection. And on the other, I mean, there's been people who, you know, I just don't have time to relate with everybody or, you know, sort of priorities. So I kind of do that too, sort of let go of people in that sense. No, so, um, sorry. Um, so you want to, you kind of have conflicting feelings. You like to, f um, to follow through with people and um, but sometimes you can't do it with everyone. So at some point, there's a, t there's a point where you have to let go. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I somehow I was just thinking of my folks there. They've been married 60, 67 years. So they don't mm -hmm. let go. <laughs> they, they don't let go in terms of relationships. <laughs> okay. And you were thinking about your folks who've been uh, married 67 years and they don't let go. They yeah. hold on to that really. Even though they argue and they're at, you know, at each other, but they don't let go. <laughs> okay. They argue a lot, but they don't let go. Yeah. So uh, I guess there's some kind of an ideal for me is that uh, in terms of, uh, you know, not letting go because of conflict, but yeah, you just kind of, have a sense of uh, connection, like with an empathy circle, you talk mm -hmm. it out and you kind of come to a mutual agreement that we're going to go our separate directions versus mm -hmm. like, I'm just going to cut them off. Uh, mm -hmm. So I kind of, yeah, I think about that sometimes, like uh, wanting it to be sort of an agreed upon, we're going to go our different directions and it's kind of mutually agreed upon uh, versus mm -hmm. just, yeah, just shutting somebody off. So you're talking about two types of letting go. One is just cutting someone off or just, you know, removing yourself from uh, conflict. And the other one is to try to gain some sort of understanding and then come to a mutual agreement to go your separate ways. And it's sort of an ideal, but I don't do it. Like there's people I can think of right now that, oh, okay, you know, we were sort of friends and it's like, oh, you know, just, it's just don't have time to kind of, maintain the friendship or it's not mm. that interesting it's you know i've got different so i just kind of like go off do my thing and you know we didn't really have any sort of discussion about it so uh, and how do you think they feel edwin i mean they're just... probably glad to get rid of me it's <laughs> like they're like hey you know get the get rid of this guy edwin all he wants to do is talk about empathy <laughs> and stuff so yeah so okay. um Selena, I'm feeling once again that uh, you, you want, somehow it feels like you want to um, switch the, the conversation, I, I don't know, to, to make it a little bit more interactive. Well, I'm sure that's all. I just want to mm -hmm. hear about, you know, what does he think? How, did, how is it for the people that he just lets go? But it sounds like they're they're okay with it they're not i don't really know i don't really know but i don't yeah they could be good with it they may want more connection i'm not really sure uh, each person is different circles. right each person so, is kind of different yeah I, talking about it in their empathy circles i had this friend and now he's gone yeah, they have these terms like ghosting, right? You just kind of like disappear, ghosting, yeah. Guys, I, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I, I was wondering if we could try to go back to the structure of the circle in which one of us is uh, the active uh, listener and the other is the speaker while the rest of the group is uh, still, lis still listening. They are silent listeners. I'm fine so with it, but Celine keeps interrupting. Yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah. I'll I'll try I'll try not to interrupt anymore. I hope thank you for understanding, Celine. Okay. Thank you. So I guess uh, Edwin and Bill, your your exchange was uh, was interrupted, and I'm wondering, Edwin, if you felt heard. Um. Yeah, I felt heard by Celine. So. <laughs> yes. Uh. Yeah, um, I think I felt heard enough. Yeah, I feel heard 
all I heard. So, okay. Or would it be okay if we went on to, to Bill? Sure. As yeah. he was, uh, it would be his turn to speak. Okay, I'll talk to Kian. Um, well, I, um, I share your experience. I've gone through the death of both of my parents. Um, and um, so, and I still feel connected. Um, and uh, you know, and, and I guess a big part of your life is you do the best you can. I'll stop there. Yeah, so you're um, relating to my, my experience mm -hmm. of letting go through death as you mm -hmm. have mm -hmm. gone through that too with your parents, but you also feel the connection still. Yeah, and, um, and then it's not just my parents. Um, a good friend of mine died. Uh, and he was kind of, uh, it was a bunch of us who were kind of, well, he was in intensive care. Uh, he didn't have any family around him. Um, and we were taking care of his house and his cats. Um, and then we'd come to visit him. And then the day I visited it was the day that they, um, he decided to die. I'll hmm. stop there. Yeah, so you're also um, talking about an experience with one of your your friends who mm -hmm. um you were you know was in intensive care and you're taking care of his home and his, his cats and you went to visit him and he and he died that day yeah and he was in a bad situation and um in the hospital uh for financial reasons was trying to move him to what they call a you know long-term care which is essentially pretty terrible from my experience with my mom. I broke my mother out of one of those facilities. Um, and, um, and I just knew that it was gonna go through pain and stuff. And so, um, you know, so he decided, you know, that this was the time and I just, and so coming back from work, I wasn't expecting it. I just held his hand um, until the drugs took effect. Hmm. So, um, you know, he was in a tricky situation and was going to be moved to a more lo long-term care for, and from your experience is not that, um, supportive or, mm. or comfortable. Um, and then you were just, you were just spending time with him as, you know, as he had decided he was ready. He was ready to go, and you were just with him until until he did. Yeah, and then I see my time. But there's something about holding his hand and looking into his eyes, um, you know, to be present with him. Hmm. So you're you were feeling something. You're um, really, I guess I guess powerful, or mm -hmm. I don't know about you just holding his hand and looking into his eyes. I did the best I could. And I'm still. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, you you did you did the best you could. Thank you. I feel for you. Okay. So thank you. So, Adelina, now we're going to. Um, We'll get some feedback for how it was for you to facilitate this circle. Whoa. <laughs> uh, it really, really took me out of my comfort zone. <laughs> As I, I usually tend to, to listen to people and let them have their space and having to intervene when, when you were interrupting, Celine. This was really... Oh my God, how, how am I going to just say it nicely without being too, I don't know, too aggressive, too, I, I, I felt like um, I, I 
completely lost control when uh, um, you uh, there was uh, Edward, Edwin's and Kian's um, um, discussion and you interrupted there. I felt like, okay, so uh, Kian said at the end that he wasn't sure if it was, uh, if he, his turn was uh, over or not. And there I was like, Oh my God, what did I do here? <laughs> did I miss something? Because my cat was also interrupting and <laughs> this was a challenge that I did not anticipate it. And I was feeling so bad about it. Oh my God. Yeah, so I, I, I felt like I was all over the place also trying to, to check the time in the same time and uh, trying to pay attention to everybody here and to see if uh, the reflections are there or not, if they're accurate. And, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. So I, I'd like to go first because I caused the problems. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I, I thought you were tracking really well. I thought you kept, you know, you knew, it looked like you knew exactly what was going on and your interventions were appropriate. And uh, especially the last time when you said that uh, you, you were concerned about the structure of the group, that the structure was, was, I don't know, compromised or something like that. That really worked for me. Um, and I think partly because it takes it out of the personal it's not anymore about that I did this or didn't do this or whatever. It's, and it was, oh yeah, the structure of the group. So I wanted to make sure that I, I let you know that that was very effective. Um, and I know it's really, <laughs> it was a lot of interventions. Three, I think I did three times. So, but you came right in and you handled it. So that was my experience of that. Thank you. Edwin, Bill, Kian, you have some feedback? Yeah, I'll, from I'll go. Uh, just a couple of notes that I made was uh, when you set the topic, you could have said, and whatever's alive for you. Mm -hmm. Just it's always okay. good, just to, that's just sort of a little small point. Uh, when uh, Celine was interrupting, I could really feel like a little bit of sense of calmness when you were reflected back where she was like, like, oh, you, I don't know how Celine felt if she helped, felt heard, but it's like, mm -hmm. I feel like, oh, she's, it, I felt a little bit of relaxation when you were doing that reflection. Uh, the other part that I just kind of wondered about was uh, you said, would that be okay? And, it, and I thought it might turn into a discussion, kind of like when you kind of open it up for somebody, it can kind of turn... You know, so uh, on one hand, I wanted to feel some uh, like empathy, but also let's get back to the topic. You know, it's like, <laughs> okay. not, let's not have a big, you know, discussion if it's okay with you. It's like, you know, it's a bit, it, it's the empathy and the assertiveness, I guess, together. So that was my one concern was, I mean, I've been in circles with people who, if you open up a door, like for discussion, mm they'll walk in and just take over with that, you know, it's like, so it's, yeah. So anyway, that was just some other thoughts. Otherwise, I, it seems like everything was kind of held. I felt held, you know, in by what was by the circle. Okay. Thank you for this, because I, I was thinking about how not to be too, uh, probably too assertive, or I don't know, just yeah. to, to put it, to put a stop to it. But uh, yeah, I, I feel that at some point, the other might just say, but I'm not okay with it. And I want to continue like this or just uh, switch the, the structure and everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, mm. Okay, it makes sense. Thank you. Um, yeah, I thought that you, you de definitely incorporated uh, Edwin's suggestion to offer empathy first. And I felt that. Um, and, you know, you have a nice way about you. And so does Kian, by the way. Um, and so I, I like the affect you know, that both of you have. One of the things that, I'm, that was a little bit is uh, I felt a little bit cut off. Um, you know, so when you're interrupted, you give somebody a, a, some more time, you know, might do. So one of the things, and the other thing just generally is a suggestion for both because I just got that. 
And I don't know, do I have to stop talking now? Should I finish, get a final reflection? Um, and the various ways to handle it. I have like a, a little piano riff when it goes off and I notice whether people notice it or not. And then if they don't notice it on the next reflection, not when the speaker's speaking, I give them a little of this uh, or something, but you could do this. I mean, that's not, uh, but, or just at least let people know, you know, if you see this, um, finish your thought, get a final reflection. And that just sort of reduces the tension that somebody might have. Mm -hmm. um, but really, you know, what, nicely done. You know, just to, you know, noticing the flow and everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, I really agree. I appreciate how you were, you know, giving the, giving empathy to the people who were, you know, interrupting. Um, so it was, it, was, it was also really good to see, you know, see you doing that so I can, you mm -hmm. know, learn. Um, um, yeah, I mean, I guess I agree a bit with Edwin about the, you know, I, I, I felt like I was on the, you know, the other side, like maybe too much, like about, no, no, we're going to stay on the topic and not giving the empathy. Um, but yeah, I think you did a nice job finding the balance between, you know, giving empathy to the people who are interrupting and also keeping it on keeping it on track. Thank you. Okay. So we have some time. We can um, have some group feedback for the whole experience and it'll leave us time for a bio break too. Anything more that you want to share about the, your experience, Kian, Arilina, your learnings? I, I will say something here. Um, in the, the last exchange with Bill and Kian, which went very deep and it was very tender, and um, at the end, you were silent for quite a long time, a pause. And then you came back and said something that showed how you were holding what Bill said. And for me, that was very touching. Um, I feel, you know, a little teary about about that. At first I thought, oh my gosh, she's not going to say anything. Is that okay? You know, and then you came back and said something, but it was with, with so much heart. Um, so thank you. It was very beautiful for me. I'm complete. Yeah, I was, I was really, I really was appreciating what you were saying, Bill. That was really mm, meaningful. Anyone else about anything that, that happened in these circles? Suggestions or? I always find the uh, topic so interesting. We do these, these breakout rooms and everybody just kind of does the topic that's of interest to them. They're, they're always so fascinating, yeah. Yeah, good topic selection, I second that. So what happens? So for example, you know, these were, these were serious topics. Um, if somebody, and I don't think either Kian or Adelina said, or whatever is alive for you, but say, mm -hmm. say that's happening and somebody then comes in with something, oh, the Easter egg hunt in the front yard was mm -hmm. really swell or something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, does that work just like anything else yeah okay you mean yeah. when they bring up the topics yeah uh, when so, they're just sharing what when it's their turn to share yeah mean? something that's you know totally superficial even though prior to that people have been talking 
quite seriously or deeply or something. Yeah, that's part of the circle. They just stay whatever is alive for you. So, yeah. Okay. Ken, yeah, you want to say? Yeah, I mean, I guess that makes sense. You know, it's people are going to say what they feel like is right for them to say. But sometimes I feel like it can be not actually what's alive for somebody. Sometimes I feel like it's, it's you know, just taking it somewhere else, not because they feel a need to do that. So I'm wondering how to, how to like accept that, but like this feels like a little bit of a distraction instead of expression. Mm -hmm. Right, that would have been an interesting practice today now that I think of it. It's like the facilitator has to choo, let go, right? You can't control can't control the circle. Yeah, um, yeah, right. So, you know, as a facilitator, you get, yeah, you can't control that, and, you know, when people can do whatever they want. But in the back of my mind, and as you get practice, um, you sort of notice that, you know, why did the person do that? You know, you let it happen with unjudgmentally. But it could be that these have touched that person deeply and they're a little bit, you know, afraid of going there. It, it, it resonated with some trauma that maybe they had um, or something like that. And so, you know, what I do is I just keep a mental note um, that somebody did this and then I just am observing. So along with everything else that you're doing, keeping time, keeping people in the practice, I know it's, it's a tall order. I'm also saying, okay, so this person kind of went to a much lighter place. Why might that be? And then I leave it, you know, uh, you, I don't do too much analysis about that and then see if that comes up again. Like, and if everybody stays deep and then that person says, well, you know, you know, I don't know, Christmas is coming or whatever it is, or, you know, I want a PlayStation 5 or whatever it is, um, you know, just kind of notice that and what, it, what might that mean? Um, and, uh, you know. And, would and would then, you reflect yeah. it back? Would you bring it to, to the circle? If, I don't know if it happens once again. And um, it would depend, again, if it's, that it's totally within the circle rules. And that we don't want to um, feel people or have people be judged because they didn't go as deep as like, you know, like, you know, I'm an older man. I had this experience, you know, Kian had the experience, but again, younger people might not have that experience. Are they not as profound? No, I'm a pretty shallow guy. Um, so, um, you know, uh, so, uh, but I keep an eye on it. You know, I would keep an eye on it and then see now is this being used for like a conflict? Do they feel, you know, and if it perturbed the, the circle practice and the flow, I might intervene. But other than that, my an original bias would be to look at it and then let it go, you know, not and not to intervene. Yeah. I'm done. Anyone? Yeah. So so I would add to that that uh... Let's say someone, if there's a very deep sort of a conversation, mm -hmm. someone seems like they're doing something superficial. Uh, so they're, they're free to, you know, say whatever's alive for them and, and get an empathic reflection. But if uh, you're feeling uh, like, hey, this is kind of superficial, I don't really like what you're doing. When it's your turn to speak to someone, you're mm -hmm. totally free to say, I think that what uh, you know, that so-and-so was saying was very superficial. I think I would like to have some real truth here. I think they're not really saying their truth. So, but if you say it within the framework and somebody reflects that back, uh, so, you know, be honest about your sense that, hey, they're a superficial asshole or something, <laughs> right? But keep, make, not, not like interrupt them when they're doing it, give them the reflection, so everyone's free to and it might kind of open up some doors too by just being open and honest but within the structure of the circle so you're free to say whatever too yeah 
Yeah, that, that's what was what I was wondering because maybe I did not express it right. Like I said because I said uh, if I could reflect it, but I was thinking about if I can bring it to to the group when it's my turn to speak, let's say, and just see how the others are also feeling about it and see what it comes out after the other reflects my what I'm saying. So. Yeah, that's great. And, it's like it, that you're being honest. You're just bringing your own authenticity and and staying within the process. And another thing that I I don't know if it's okay to do so or not. I was thinking that maybe after the circle ends, maybe I can connect with that person and see what's going on. If they are, I don't know if something touched them or not, or if they just felt like. Uh, they they did not uh, belong to the group or something mm. i don't know or you could even bring up your concerns within the circle mm -hmm. like when it's your turn like oh i'm concerned about so and so that if they feel like they belong or even speak directly like i'm really concerned about you that you maybe not feel like you belong and you'll say well you're concerned about me not feeling like i belong and then and then you give them space to uh, share whatever is for them. So, you know what I'm saying? It's like whatever is coming up for you is totally, is, is great. It's what's alive for you then to share it with them. So maybe even doing that before doing something afterwards, try to resolve it within the circle. Mm -hmm. This opens up for me um, another window on the the process and the empathy that it it has an energy that um, well first of all of allowing but also of I'm going to use the word tempering. Um, mm. So, so that because I was surprised when you said that, oh, that, you know, somebody else can bring it up and as part of what we share in the circle. And uh, so I'm thinking about the effect of empathy in a, in a little bit broader context than I have before. I like this. Thank you. Yeah, the empathy sort of tempers any other feelings that arise. They, it's like it. It's sort of, the empathy lets the feeling arise, it listens to it, it hears it, it acknowledges the feeling and says, it's okay. <laughs> it's okay, I'm going to listen to your feeling, whatever it is, and it's acceptable here. And that sort of does sort of transform it, right? It's like, it's like when you feel heard, it's like, oh, okay, I'm going to be heard. I'm not going to be shut down. It's sort of the pain of being shut down that's... Uh, what kind of escalates. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, thank you. I've received many gifts to this morning that I had not anticipated. I'm very rich. Thank you. So um, anything else for anybody before we take a, a bio break, those of us who want it and then join the the final circle. Cool. I just want to say that I don't know when when the time flew mm -hmm. <laughs> because yeah, I, I felt like I just wanted to stay more in uh, in the topics and just because there was so much, they, they were so meaningful that uh, it, it really touched me and I just wanted not to end. But mm -hmm. I was surprised when I heard you saying that. Okay, so now it's time to to discuss about how the facilitation went. And I was like, oh, damn it. <laughs> and I'll just say about that briefly, that that's giving your, your sense of sort of the gestalt of the circle. Yeah. You know, like if we had five minutes and we went longer, you know, so you're starting to feel that sort of meta, you know, cognition, you know, the, you know, the gestalt the, 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 in the totality and compare it to what, you know, what's not circle. And, and that's, uh, I think, a, a good learning experience for people. That's it. Bio break, sure. Bio break. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Yay.
So Kian, I just wanted to ask you, I read your mom's beautiful letter, uh, the email, and uh, are you having any success finding a place to rent? Um, well, yeah, you can, in case you can hear, I'm with, oh. uh, with uh, my neighbors right now. Um, yeah. So that's been lots of fun. Um, yeah. And it's been good to be close by to be able to, you know, uh -huh. <laughs> to access what we need to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, certainly, you know, if there's anything I can do, I don't think there's much I could do. And I think other than, you know, offer, you know, emotional support when I can, but, uh, you know. Yes, yes, I'll be down in a bit. Sorry. That's okay. Anyway, just wanted to check in. That's all. Okay, yeah. Sorry. That's yeah. all right. It's okay. Well, you can handle that. Um, yeah, sorry. Um, yeah, thank you. I've been, this has been really, you know, you know, I thought at first, like, oh gosh, uh, how can I handle Empathy Circle right now? I've got so much other stuff, but this has actually really been, really been uh, meaningful and helpful. Good, good. I'm glad. All right, I guess we're going to be uh, one minute to the circle. Uh, one bye, minute. Break. Ian, I looked on the news and uh, I think I saw your house. Was that the one that was, it was like on the news and all that stuff? The, yeah, the, the orange one. Yeah. Yep. Wow. <laughs> that was my house. What's the chance? Like, <laughs> it's the one house that got damaged. Of. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it was it was just just freakish, but totally wow. And yeah. you were in injured or? Yeah, um, yeah, I'm not, you know deeply but i was definitely I was the one person that was actually hurt by it yeah it's amazing like what are the chances that we know the one right. person in <laughs> right. one house <laughs> that, that uh, we got the it seems okay well i'm glad you're okay i'm glad you had some empathy buddy calls and yeah so Thank you. Glad you're yeah. here, that you're still joining us, even with all that going on. Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks for facilitating, Celine, holding the space. Oh, it's great, great opportunity. Thank you. I wish you well, Adelina, as you deal with the letting goes right. that are ahead of you. That's definitely you. challenging, for sure. Yeah, and it's also, there's also some some uh, letting go in my personal life as well that I have to do. And uh, yeah. it's even more challenging that uh, at work than at work, yeah, so. Well, may you get plenty of empathy to help you through it and self-empathy. That helps, having empathy to let go. Yeah. Welcome back, everyone. I think, Michelle, you were doing the debrief. Oh yeah, I am. Uh, <laughs> actually, and I hadn't, I hadn't, I hadn't Where actually. Where would we be without me keeping everyone on track? <laughs> yeah, and we were in the middle of debriefing our own circle and hadn't fully concluded it. Um, so one second, and I'll just bring. Uh, yes, so um, we're going to do the debrief now. Um, uh, just one moment. Uh, Ooh. Yeah. Okay, so welcome back everybody. So now if each of us can take a, about a minute um, to share uh, about our experience and insights and um, what we learned um, on, on, the, um, on our circle. And I am going to invite people in the order that I see them appear on my screen. Here, um, so uh, uh, Leslie, would you like to share? Um, <laughs> um, yeah, I. Um, 
it was a it was a challenging experience um sort of being in a space between you know what the training was about today which is challenging um one another facilitating and um just being in the on the sort of ground that i'm on right now um which is i think sort of just seeking um you know, empathy circle in 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 just its most straightforward and, and essential way, and so coming in knowing like though what it was, it was just sort of interesting to navigate between those needs. Yeah, I I I can imagine that's really challenging thing to do to be dealing with a challenging challenges within your facilitation <laughs> while life is throwing up so much crisis. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well done, well done. Um, and um, uh, Janos, would you like to share? Thank you very much. Uh, my uh, experience is uh, two side. First of all, I, I quit uh, uh, from the facilitator uh, uh, experience because uh, I not feel my, uh, myself, but also I actively practice uh, in the, uh, the, the higher level challenge. Uh, so uh, uh, I uh, make a little harder for uh, the, the exper experience uh, for others. Uh, I also not so much uh, played over my 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 uh, game <coughs> in this chat. Can, can I can I clarify, Janos? You 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 quit the facilitator role only for today, though. You will be back next week. Yes. 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 <laughs> yeah. You just gave yourself a holiday today. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And we were really we welcome that. We welcome and we want you back next week. <laughs> Yes. And, uh, last week, I, I unfortunately I arrived too late, to, so I can't join to this. And uh, today I don't feel comfortable in the facilitator rules. Uh, okay. So, that, uh, uh, but uh, I'm happy to practice and uh, learn in this. But I don't know how can I be useful here. Uh, maybe uh, later on someone tell me I'm fit here, or, or maybe the be better if I go back to the normal circle on the Friday and come back later here. I don't know which one the better one, the uh, solution. <clears throat> yeah, um, I, yeah, I, I just, uh, I was really glad you were on the circle and I feel you learned a lot and what you done was perfect. So yeah, I hope, I hope you, I hope you're back next week and you fit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Happy for your trust. <laughs> Yes, yes, definitely. Yes. Um, Kat, would, would you like to share? Sure. Um, we had a lot of challenge in our circle because I think there's about three levels of challenge identified. One being the different needs people had. Two being us doing the usual challenging format when you're the facilitator trying to deal with it. And then three being a format where you switch that so you're watching someone try to facilitate but then you're challenging them and then you're trying to bring all that together and it's really hard to misbehave so then you're like so there's so much challenge going on it was there's just so much in it it was really beneficial but really quite a lot mentally and emotionally actually so i appreciate everyone's um everything <laughs> it's just a lot that was all <laughs> Yeah, it's definitely the biggest part of the training, I think, is this like the session three and four with the challenges is like, yeah, it's a stretch, but yeah, no, it's cool. It's, it's great to hear you enjoyed it. Um, uh, Evelyn, would you like to share? Yes, um... I don't know what to say. I'm, I'm complete. I have a lot to think about how um, how to move forward with all of this uh, content. Um, I got a lot of uh, interesting feedback and a few tips. And one thing that stressed me out was that I don't have a second counter. So I was always kind of stressed out. Do people still have 10 minutes or, to, you know, not 10 minutes, 10 seconds or 40 seconds or am I cutting them off too soon? Um, but 
was relatively comfortable with the role um, and just observing the second round, my relationship to time and structure and that kind of thing. So, yeah, so thank you very much for the experience and looking forward to continuing working with you guys. You did a great thank job. And Adelina. Yeah, um, well, for me, it was uh, really challenging. I did not expect it to, to happen like this. I mean, at some point, I even had a facilitator challenge when my cat was all over my keyboard and everything besides what was going on in the group. And um, I felt like it, it's pretty difficult to pay attention to everything that's going on there with the participants, uh, with myself with the time and everything. So there's a lot of going on there. Uh, but on the other hand, um, I loved the topics and it was uh, a really uh, deep conversation there and, and, I, and I did not want it to, to stop. So <laughs> yeah, this, this was my feeling after today. Thank you. That's Um, Kian, would you like to share how um, your experience? Um, yeah, um, it definitely felt um, the, the challenges felt uh, more, well, I guess comparing it to my, my past experiences of this, I was more focused on dealing with the challenges. But today, because the topics were, you know, so engaging, and I was really getting into that, it felt more like a real experience that I might have in a circle because I'm just focusing on what we're doing. And it sort of caught me off guard more, the, the interruptions. Um, so it was, it was, it was, I appreciated it, but it was definitely much more challenging to handle, um, you know, what was going on. Um, but yeah, um, it was, I really, you know, enjoyed our conversations and it was, a, it was a really good experience. Mm. Yeah, I'm really, uh, 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 hearing you say it's a really good experience. It's really cool. Mm. Um, and um, I believe we've been around all of the trainees been to all of the, tra the all of the facilitators now so we might move to the trainees at this point um uh have we heard from cat yeah leslie yes okay sorry leslie was first yeah 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 that's everybody yeah mm, <laughs> really nice shares um uh, uh so um erin would you like to share? Sure. Um, my, um, I guess I feel I've, I've enjoyed it. in these empathy circle trainings um, the experience of like stretching. So trying something, maybe even, you know, trying something new. Um, and doing that in a in a culture of empathy like a culture that's intentionally um empathetic and so i felt a lot of that today and i really appreciated it and um took a lot out of our circle a lot <laughs> so thank you to everyone who was in it it was really really special so that's all i have to share yeah, I really enjoyed that circle as well, and I just really, really appreciated having you there as a as a as a facilitator as well. So, <laughs> cool. uh, um, uh, Graham, uh, would you like to share your share? Yes, please, Michelle. Um, our meeting, uh, our breakout breakout room was very, very uh, interesting. We. Um, um, uh, we sort of identified that there were unmet needs in our group. And so there was some very real uh, undercurrents and tensions 
and emotional needs in the group. Um, and also we were role playing at the same time. And so there was this, this real, real dynamic, it's very real. And uh, um, for me, it was uh, just a wonderful example, even though some of us paid a price for it, but it was a wonderful example uh, of what we might meet, meet in real life. And uh, I felt that this was, uh, uh, was a very valuable experience. And uh, so I, I appreciate and enjoyed the meeting. And really great thanks to, uh, uh, to Leslie and Lou and Kat. Thank you. Oh, it sounds like it was powerful. Yeah, it was powerful. Uh, um, um, Celine, would you like to share? Sure. Um, well, I really appreciated the depth uh, in our group, not only because of the, the nature of the topics that we addressed, uh, also mm, with the experience of the structure and the process and the energy of empathy. I, I enjoyed a, a deeper appreciation for all of those. Very meaningful. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that sounds like it was really, uh, that sounds really sacred. Um, um, so I just as part of the trainee part, I'll just yeah, I'll share that for our circle. Um, it, it was part. It was it was an, it was a really uh, yeah. Just a lot of thanks to um, Evelyn <laughs> and to uh, Janos, who were both um, really put uh, put on the spot and uh, really rose. Uh, like yeah, it was just it was really. Um, was really really a, a great experience and to um thanks to Aaron for um, being a facilitator there as well and Tim for like uh for being our trainer um it flew and it was and I uh, really learned a lot from it um yeah I'm feeling that aliveness right now <laughs> that you feel coming out of them circles where it's just like mm, it's just it's delicious it's great um and if um, so we might move to debriefing with the with the uh, trainers. So um, Tim, would you like to share? Yes, I want to try to explain something, um, and maybe somebody could reflect it. But um, I'm feeling the power of coming up against other human beings and having contact, and 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 we we push against each other. We we ex we express invitations. We bump up. I was acting in a very uh, kind of destructive way right at the end, and uh, and I knew I was having an impact. I don't like to do that, but but we for our learning, we're we're moving up against each other, and this contact I'm feeling for me is uh, it's enlivening, and it's uh, 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 I grow every time. Maybe it's the heart of empathy, like we're willing to be affected by each other. And, and, and to move in our friction and our contact, I, it's really almost a physical experience for me today. So I, I'm, in, I'm in a state of uh, maybe I feel more vulnerable to other people, but I feel more alive and more honest, more authentic uh, as we uh, like we're stewarding our, each other's growth. We're responsible for each other is what I'm trying to say in how we bring honesty and empathy to our exchanges. So for me, I'm feeling almost like physical contact after that group. Uh, and, and that, uh, like I said, it, it's enlivening, uh, uh, stimulating, uh, engaging. Um, yeah, so I, I don't know. I don't know how that's coming through clear. Maybe I, have, I should have more observations, giving feedback, uh, acting, uh, struggling, uh, feeling. I just feel the presence of, of others near me. That's it. I, that, that, and I'm grateful for that. Thank you. I'm yeah, gonna... we were really, we were really grateful for your guidance today. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, um, 
Uh, Lou, would you like to share? Yeah, thanks, Michelle. <clears throat> yeah, so I was in a group with um, Graham and Leslie and Kat. And uh, so I'm mostly feeling just a lot of gratitude and a lot of respect for uh, everyone in the group. Um, we worked really hard <laughs> as a group. Um, and uh, uh, in addition to the normal, you know, uh, say me offering challenges to people who wanted them, um, I took a turn facilitating and had people uh, give me challenges so they could see how I respond to them. And that turned out to be more challenging than, um, than I expected. And so there was a lot of learning for me and, and I think a lot of learning for everyone. And so I just think, um, yeah, everyone worked really hard and participated fully. And, and, uh, and I just have a lot of gratitude and respect for everyone. Thank you. Uh, thanks so much, Lou. Um, Bill. Um, what struck me today was, were the layers of perception that you start with the, uh, the timing and the mechanics of it. But then once you practice that, you sort of get a vote, well, how's this person feeling? And you're starting to kind of put together uh, more sophisticated and also broader conceptions and, and then getting a sense of the flow or the gestalt of the circle. And so I just see that and it, it's all, that's always a learning curve um, and for me as well. So thank you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Thanks for all these teachings that you share with us all. <laughs> cool. Um, Edwin. Yeah. Um, yes, thinking, uh, sort of sensing into how I feel, it was sort of like a, a sense of heaviness. So I'm feeling a little heavy. It's uh, kind of hard for uh, sort of energy to kind of pop through that heaviness. And uh, one thing in the empathy circle, you can always talk about whatever is alive for you. And I think I should have mentioned that in the group because I think that it kind of helps uh, sort of move the energy by kind of being, uh, you know, talking about what you feel in the moment. And it actually did come up in, in the group about, you know, what if somebody's sort of speaking superficially, do you say something? Or you can, when it's your turn, you can say anything you want. Say, oh, you're being very superficial, whatever, when it's your turn. So say whatever's alive for you. So, I, so I'm sort of uh, reconnecting with that, like say what's alive. And I wanted to get a physical motion, a mirrored motion. I'm inspired by Leslie last time. So it was like, come if I can get a mirrored motion from others. <laughs> no, Aaron, it's an up, it's pushing up. It's not a wiggly fingers, it's up. <laughs> That's it, yeah, I feel, I feel seen. <laughs> So th yeah, great, Timothy. <laughs> so thanks. <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, yeah, I think I think yeah, that's the uh, debrief. Um, thanks, Edwin. <laughs> thanks. Okay, so uh, we'll have a little closing here. Uh, any trainer final comments? I'll get one to add. Just uh, we have one more session after this. So we're going to be doing, you know, having another cohort starting after. So to, you know, for everyone, just to remind everyone to sort of spread the word, uh, you know, I'll send some links about, you know, how to uh, do that. We have a, a Facebook event page as well as the LinkedIn uh, page. You can go there and invite all your friends. If you're on LinkedIn, you can invite a thousand friends. So uh facebook it's like 400 friends so even if they don't come it's good just to kind of let the, let people know uh, you know about what we're we're doing here it kind of gets the word maybe they can't come you know at the next uh session next cohort but you know it'll get on their uh, radar and uh so that's the main thing is uh you know start thinking about sort of the, the next cohort and i hope everyone can take part and also sign up as uh trainees you know the start taking on more responsibility, learning how to actually uh, do the training. So that's for me, Bill, thanks. Sure, anyone? Um, uh, I have something, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Tim, you wanna go first? Oh yeah, yeah, just briefly. Uh, someone in our group asked this question, where 
is this needed? Like, where can I offer it? Where is it wanted? You know, like I'm seeing the value of this. Where does it fit in? You know, like just that, that deep question of like, now that we've got this, where can we share it? So I just had a thought, like for myself, I have that same question, you know, and I want to pay attention this week to who in my life is asking for something like this, even if they're not saying I need an empathy circle or I need empathy or listening, but who, who's asking for, for, for the needs or the, you know, the values that the empathy circle fulfills. Somebody's like, God, I'd love to, you know, talk this through, or I'd love for somebody to listen, or God, I wish people could just get along. Like, I wonder how, if people ask for something like the empathy circle in many different ways. So I want to tune into that and pay attention to see if there's people at work in my neighborhood or anybody who is expressing something and then maybe take the risk and talk about it. Talk about the empathy circle process as a, as a possibility. Um, so that, that's for me. I'm going to tune in. Where are people asking? How They may be asking in many different ways, <laughs> even in their behavior, and wondering if this could help and then offer it. That's something that I'm going to work on this week. Thanks for listening. Yeah, Lou? Yeah, I just wanted to say that the, you know, the purpose of doing these sessions where we have the challenges is to help people stretch uh, and learn in difficult situations learn how to cope with the feelings that go on inside you when you're faced with a situation like that and learn the skills for responding. And it's our goal to stretch you, but not to traumatize you. <laughs> uh, and so I just wanted to say, if, if anyone felt traumatized by what happened today, you know, in, in your circles, reach out to one of the instructors and let them know and let us talk to you about it. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Lou. Uh, okay. Uh, so we'll talk about what's coming up in uh, session five and what that's going to be is an integration of your learnings and feedback about the training um, and then also a little bit of a larger look uh, into how it was a, an empathy circle, how does that fit into a culture of empathy or things like that. So um, in the assignments, please fill out the uh, session feedback survey. Uh, and the link is in the chat, uh, as, as Edwin will put it in there, right there. Um, I don't see the link in here. Okay. It'll take uh, a second. Okay, sure. Uh, if you can hold the empathy buddy call, um, and I, I think people are familiar with that. Are there any questions about the empathy buddy call? I didn't think so. Okay. Uh, not that I gave you a chance to, <laughs> uh, if you can, to facilitate a, um, you know, an empathy uh, circle, if you can, or like as, you know, um, Timothy talked about, you know, just taking the elements and just applying them in your life. Um, and then uh, this is a, sort of my little you know, thing and uh, it, think about how you see the empathy circle practice beginning to build a culture of empathy in your world. Uh, and the only thing I'll say about this is that in many sort of changes, societal changes, there has to be some sort of cleaning house. Uh, we have to vote these people out. We have to kill these people. We have to do anything. And then everything will be great. Um, but actually, in these circles, we actually create a little mini culture of empathy within the groups that we form. And for me, I'll speak for myself here, that's very profound because we cut out all of the other stuff and we get to the experience that we want to have. Um, so anyway, think about that. Um, and uh, we'll talk about that in uh, session five. Um, so please post one feeling that you have now as a result of being here today. And then uh, if you can do two things at once or just quickly thereafter, we'll do jazz hands. <laughs> so go ahead. I am putting it in there now. Okay. All right. And people are doing that and okay. And let's do a little jazz hands there. All right. So great, great. Uh, well, I certainly want to uh, express my appreciation uh, for you all, and I think I, all the trainers and trainees feel the same way, too. Thank you yeah. so much. Lou? Thanks, everyone. Just have a great week. Thanks. Yeah. See you next time.
Thank you, one and all. Much respect. Thank you. Thank you. Namaste. Thank you. Bye. 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 See you Bye. next week. Everybody.